This is RangerCast, Episode 6, Cosmic Fury Reveals at Hasbro PulseCon. Alright, this is RangerCast. As always, I'm Tyler, better known as Rito Volto, and I am joined by Lamar. Hey everyone, happy to be here. Okay, it's going to be a uh, a quicker show than usual, because there's only two of us. You know, everybody's got places to be, yada yada yada. So Hasbro PulseCon was a thing, we're going to get to that later on. Also, uh, the new episodes, the, the backstretch of Power Rangers Dino Fury is also a thing. We will get to that in another episode, because I am apparently the only person in our usual crew who's watched any of it uh that'll happen uh but go watch it it's fantastic and we, we look forward to talking about it or i look forward to talking about it because that finale damn uh there is going to be parts where we're kind of going to be flirting with the idea of spoiling it um kind of because of the uh, big news we got to talk about but we are going to get to that later so first Vesper, the black uh, Power Rangers Hyper Force Ranger, is going to be in Power Rangers Legacy Wars. That's our first news item. Uh, so, Lamar, have you uh, played any of uh, Legacy Wars yet? Yeah, Lately? actually, I used, to, I used to play it back when it first came out, uh, tied into the 2017 movie. I haven't had as much time uh, for mobile gaming as before but i always like going in and i have it downloaded on my phone just going through and seeing all the characters that they've added and their unique little takes on it and i really like the art style that they do for it yeah um i still play it now and then you know i've got other other like some days i don't play it like it used to be very habitual um i was paying for vip for a while but i didn't really play it enough to justify the cost but i like the problem is a game is such like a freemium money suck if you want uh any of the really good characters um and vesper like they'll say like oh yeah we got vesper we got this skin or or what have you but uh you won't be able to get it unless you are willing to cough up way too much money for even a chance yeah definitely um i mean it's free to play for a reason uh they have to make their money somewhere it's unfortunate. Uh, Power Rangers has such an opportunity for a great AAA video game. Um, obviously, this is not that, and Battle for the Grid, which was another attempt, also struggling. Well, um, I wouldn't call it struggling. I, th I think it's pretty well regarded. Um, but I think that they could be... Like, when was the last time you heard about new characters being added to it? Yeah, I, I think they did a season four just recently. Um, again, I, I'm not as familiar. Like, I didn't like the, the gameplay uh, just because it's a 2D side-scrolling, or not a 2D side-scroller, sorry, a 2D fighting game. Yeah. Um, so that's more of a personal thing for me. I would like something maybe a little bit closer to, uh, maybe not like a first-person shooter, but something closer to that genre or a third person action uh open world type game i think i mean there there's been an attempt and it was kind of scuttled with the buyout um but i think it's difficult to do a game like that i guess then again he, uh heroes of the grid has a t as is rated teen so maybe they're not necessarily held down by the fact that the kid's property but nobody in charge has had the the foresight to do something like that. Yeah, no, and I get also that it's a smaller franchise, and they don't want to, um, you know, stretch their market. Um, at the same time, I think done well, it could have been there. There is potential there. It just it needs the investment that I don't know if it will be getting at some point. You know, I guess we'll see, you know, what Hasbro and E1 want the franchise to be 
in the years to come as far as video games goes. Uh, moving from video games to comics, though, uh, Legacy 100 is getting a second printing, which is great for people like me who went to their comic store to pick up the first printing on you know the Wednesday, the appointed Wednesday, only to find they were all cleaned out. But if you go onto Apple Books or a similar platform, uh, you can download it for ten bucks, and it's well worth well worth a read. It's a very, very fulfilling uh, issue. Yeah, no, the um, I, that's where I have all of my uh, Ranger comics is digitally. The Power Rangers comics are the best thing going on in the franchise right now. If you enjoy Power Rangers in any way, shape, or form, and if you don't, why are you listening to this? But um, definitely go read the comics. At 101, uh, that might be a good place to start if you haven't picked them up before, because now there are a few threads left hanging uh, at the end of 100, a few characters who Melissa Flores might um, might bring back up in her run, but we'll see, uh, we'll see what she does with that. It really closes the book on, uh, on Ryan Parrott's fantastic run on the series. And uh, in other news, Osama Sentai King Oger is the next Sentai, apparently, according to Japanese trademark filings. Uh, we know nothing, really, besides the name and you know, Osama, of course, Japanese for King. So, King Sentai, King Oger. Uh, did they, is that what really all they could come up with? Did they not, like, workshop it? I, I don't know. What's going on, Toy? I mean, they're they're rounding out 50 seasons. I understand getting a little fatigued. I mean, couldn't they just do dinos again? Well, I mean, I guess if you want to really break the mold there. Maybe ninjas? I, I don't know. That's what I guess. All I, I got. Ninja. Maybe maybe cops? Dino ninjas yeah. in space. Yeah, well, we're kind of getting ahead, getting ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> but but uh, speaking of in space, uh, the podcast Power Trip spoke to Jackie Marchand, the longtime uh, writer and producer who worked on shows, including Power Rangers in Space, from late Muddy Morphin up to Time Force, and then from Ninja Storm up until midway through RPM. And she's just a font of knowledge, a whole bunch of stories from behind the scenes. Uh, she talks about her favorite season, biggest challenges, all of that. And there's probably tea to be spilled. Full disclosure, I haven't listened to the episode yet. I'm going to, and I encourage you, you guys to as well. Um, so we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll talk all about what happened at Hasbro Pulse Con, and boy, is there a lot to talk about. Kenny, I'm starting a podcast. Recruit me and co-host with Attitude. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, what the heck? I thought we put that teleporter in storage. Uh, Michael? Next time you want me on Kaiju Weekly, tell Jimmy to... Drop the act, Nathan. <laughs> this is not the Monster Island Film Vault. Okay, fine. But what's going on? I'm having you join me on The Power Trip, a journey through the Power Rangers franchise. It's a podcast version of the article series I'm writing for Kaiju Ramen Magazine. Oh, interesting. We'll spend a year analyzing the Power Rangers franchise, dedicating an episode to each season and movie. Ah, I see. So we'll be doing an overview and talking about them in broad strokes. Exactly. We'll discuss Ranger teams, the villains, the theme songs, and so much more. Can we give up final words for stuff like the best fight scene and the craziest moments like I do on Henshin then? You bet. More phenomenal. When do we start? We drop episodes every two weeks starting Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. You know what that means, Michael. It's Morphin Time. My nephew liked the Power Rangers, and I did this on his birthday where he had all his friends around. They were like, Green Ranger? I said, let me show you the real Sentai. I'm going to show you the episode where Green Ranger actually died. And they were sitting there looking. A couple kids started crying like, no, Green Ranger can't be daddy. And the parents were like, 
Why are you showing our kids? The Anime World Order Podcast. Not suitable for children because the truth hurts. Visit us online at www.animeworldorder.com. And we're back. Uh, Hasbro and the Power Rangers Twitter hinted at uh, some monumental Power Rangers news during the Hasbro PulseCon panel. And boy, for all the things we didn't get at Power Morph Con, like suits, all that, yada, 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 we did get at Hasbro PulseCon. So Made up for it. God, did it. So after a whole bunch of drama and questions and people yelling at Simon Bennett on Twitter, PSA, don't yell at Simon Bennett on Twitter. Um, even if you offer him ideas, right. he's legally obliged not to use them. <sighs> Maybe just don't yell at people on Twitter also doesn't really or, help. Or, don't, or never tweet. Never tweet. I think that's the best advice. By the way, you can follow us on Twitter at RangerCast. <laughs> <laughs> you can read all of our tweets. Uh, I promise I promise we're not toxic. But anyway, getting back on topic. Cosmic Fury, uh the Sentai they're adapting is, and that's where if you're watching PulseCon Live, that's where it cut off. Uh and it, which was very clever of them, telling people to go check the video later. And everybody did as they said, check the video l- later. Uh to find um Andre Blackner, uh, his interview with Simon Bennett and most of the cast, and the Sentai they're adapting is Q Ranger, but also not. They're adapting the Zord footage only from Q Ranger and going with their own suits, their own ground level fights. Uh, Lord Zed, uh, is going to be the big bad, and again, I am biting my lips so hard to not spoil anything about how that can be. But I appreciate it. Yeah, but uh, the suits, they showed off pictures, or rather artwork, of the uh, green and gold suits, and watching the panel live, it seemed like for the cast, this was their first time seeing the suits as well. Uh, they only just now touched down New Zealand, probably for most of them right after doing this panel. I guess Tessa was probably already home, but you get my point. Like, right now, they're already back in makeup trailer, getting ready to start shooting again. Um, but we're going to link to reports and pictures of uh, of the new suits, but they look kind of like kind of akin to you know, Lights of Orion kind of beefiness. Um... With design There's touches, clearly- yeah, and a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. There was like, clearly some thought into maintaining, you you know, consistency with the Dino Fury suits, but also make making you know separating them and making them look more powerful. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I personally wasn't a fan of the asymmetrical style to them. Um, but that being said, I have to, um, you know, uh, give a major thumbs up to the level of intricacy and the level of effort that they're putting in. Because for American original suits, they could just be going with bare minimum, you know, something closer to like a Jungle Fury where it's just red spandex from head to toe. But no, they, they are really putting in the effort, and that's uh, very telling for the direction of the franchise. Yeah, there, there's hand wringing online about the classic Power Rangers lightning bolt being on the buckles, and I, I, I kind of like, I kind of understand that, um, because there's not a lot of times where that particular bit of marketing material has shown up in universe. The only time that comes to mind is. Power Rangers Dino Thunder, the truck that appeared in the finale, had the, the Power Rangers logo right smack on the hood. Um, but it's possible there could be an in-universe explanation. Um, again, I am... I'm biting really hard on my lip to avoid saying anything about the finale. Um, but... Uh, the finale is great, and you guys should watch it. I think I should leave it there. Uh, as far as that goes, going to be ten episodes. That's bad news. 
the good news, it's going to drop exclusively in Netflix uh, next sometime next year. We don't know exactly when. All around the world at the same time, so no more of those international spoilers. I mean, the fact that it's 10 episodes is not really a concern to me. Um, it's probably a stopgap measure, and also, let's be honest, viewership has never been the bread and butter for this franchise. It's marketing. And as long as the Megazords sell, and as long as the Ranger figures sell, there won't be an issue. And I, I think, though, 10 episodes, that gives them the opportunity to be a little choosy in what Q Ranger or Zord fights they use. I'm saying Zord instead of Mecha, so sue me. Um, because Q Ranger had way more Rangers and way more Zords, and there are a lot of shots in Q Ranger where you see the Rangers in their cockpits. So you got to figure out there. There's a lot of a lot of detective work involved in in picking the fights and picking out like which Q Ranger Zords to assign to which Rangers. Um, right, right, because they don't all ne- they don't necessarily fit each ranger's animal motif either, uh, and mm. that's a bit of a puzzle. And I don't envy the writers who have to solve it. I mean, it wasn't really an issue for them um, in Mighty Morphin seasons two and three. I mean, my goodness, the ranger Zord think... wasn't even black. Um, you know what I, I mean? Think, I, I think I, I, I think uh, they. Yeah, I think they got lucky. They got lucky with those seasons because of the existence of the Falcon Zord, for example. Yeah, the Falcon Zord was really the the lucky bit. But, I mean, honestly, also, the the kids didn't really seem to, to notice or be bothered. Now, I noticed or, and was bothered by this, but the, the fact that the white ranger suit looks absolutely nothing like the rest of the Mighty Morphin suits... But the fact that they're doing their own original stuff and that it doesn't really tie in with the Zords that much, I don't think that's going to be an issue. And joining us midstream because uh, we recorded we were recording with him earlier, but he actually dropped out, and that that that's the point where we also realized we weren't actually recording. Uh, is Bryce? Hello, Bryce. Wait, we weren't recording. <laughs> yeah, we I now. realized that shortly after you dropped out. So anyway, Bryce, we were talking about. Uh, Cosmic Fury and you know, the fact that it's only going to be 10 episodes and uh, the fact that it's going to be on Netflix and all that and the fact they're they're bold enough to do new suits uh, and using the Q-Ranger Zords and having Zed be the big bad. Um, what do you think of this apparent victory lap being given to the Dino Fury cast? Well, I think that the Power Rangers as a whole deserves a victory lap. So for it to actually go out on a good note when we've seen so very many bad notes is uh, it's it's inspiring for all of those that are literally old enough to remember where this started. Yeah. And speaking of where it started, the other big show news that was announced at the end of the panel, which is separate from Dino Fury, uh, because... When they were recording this, I guess aside from Tessa, who I guess was probably just home because she lives there, um, the cast hadn't yet left for New Zealand. They're there right now as we speak, getting the makeup, all that, shooting. Um, But we got a message from the set, a very surprise message from David Yost and Walter Jones, who are in Auckland right now or were at the time. I don't know. Shooting something very special, David Yost said, for the 30th anniversary. And according to eagle-eyed uh, social media detectives, Catherine Sutherland and Steve Cardenas are in Auckland as well. And Steve Cardenas is not shy about it in the least. Also in New Zealand, and credit to Power Rangers Brazil for uh, pointing this out. Um, Twitter, Facebook, look them up if you know Portuguese, I guess is the newcomer Charlie Kirsch, who fans believe, not confirmed or anything, is playing a character named Yen, uh, who would be Trini's daughter. And that's actually, I'm really interested to see if that's true, what, like, how that's handled. Yeah, I mean, especially when she's going to be up against the OGs. It's not like it's the kids of all the original Rangers, like many. But how, but how, narr- how narratively that's handled? 
Trini. Right. Yeah. It'll be nice also to get reference to Trini since the power yeah. transfer, because we haven't, we, there's been nothing. Um, well, I think I mean, what Tyler was alluding to is, are they going to say Trini died? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, well, yeah. I mean, I mean I like, how do they handle like her that. absence? My mom was doing some grocery so I had to take her place. Right, that's right. You can't. Uh, and you know, that probably was also how they. Like, it's tough. It's a tough question to answer. Like, do you bring back a Yellow Ranger? Do you bring back Karen Ashley? Or do you figure out a way to honor Twee Trang? And you figure if you're. If you have together as much of the original cast as you're going to get together, then. I feel like you got David Yost and Walter Jones returning to the franchise for the first time in in Walter's case nearly you know nearly 30 years. You know, you kind you I feel like you're kind of obligated to honor Trini. Absolutely. And she's a fan favorite her. too. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think it's probably interesting cuz like we're not sure exactly what this thing is if it's going to be like a standard episode. So maybe Yin is there as the, you know, tendril to the youth with all these old people running around in spandex. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, you know, we really just know zero about the 30th anniversary special besides the fact that it's a thing that's happening. Whatever form it's going to take, whether it's going to be special, whether it's going to be a series, you know, what, 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 we really don't know. Or what, if any role, these characters will play in Cosmic Fury. Um, but also, since Hasbro is a toy company first, we also got a slew of toy announcements. Uh, the first thing, uh, the first thing I threw my money to immediately after the panel uh, was the latest entry in the Zord Ascension project, the Astro Megazord. And this is one of my favorites when I was a kid, and I'm happy to pay three times as much to own it again. Uh... No, I I got to be honest. I was thinking they were going to go Titanus for this one, but honestly, I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, obviously, in space is a hugely important season in the franchise. Being able to see it get the love and care it deserves, um, and honestly, the design looks fantastic. Um, you know, it's very well detailed. Uh, there's a lot of little neat uh, things that they put in there. Um, and the fact that, uh, I think you were saying earlier, that it scales exactly with the Zord Ascension project is, or with the, the Dino Megazord, is just another great selling point. Yeah, it like it's taller than the Dino Megazord uh, Zap toy because, in fact... The Astro Megazord is taller than the Dino Megazord. And, you know, something that, you know, fans kind of groused over about the Zap Dino Megazord was that the Ranger minifigures um, fit only in the chest, which is not where they're supposed to go in the, you know, in, in the show. And the way that the minifigure question has been addressed with the Astro Megazord is genius. There are actually two different places they can go. If you have it in ship mode, you can put them, if you open up under the uh, the M, they have a replica of the deck of the Astro Mega ship, which is frankly genius. And I sure as heck wouldn't have thought to do that. Um, and it looks just, it's not painted, but it looks incredible. It's about time Hasbro got something right, because we've been arguing yeah. about the Lightning Collection for years now. Well, they knocked this out of the park, because the, the second place where they can go uh, is where they're supposed to be, in the cockpit that actually exists in the shuttle. You can pop that open and pop in a few, uh, pop in all five Rangers where they're supposed to be. And it's just everything that I wanted, and I only wish that I could, you know, get it sooner. Uh, they also had some other uh, lightning co uh, collection announcements at uh, during the panel. Uh, they are bringing to the lightning co collection the next wave, which includes uh, Izzy, Coda, Zoe, and here's a random one: 
of Putrid from Wild Force. My yeah, favorite! One... The Putrid don't get enough <laughs> respect! Uh, my guess is that's sarcasm, because I've got to be honest, this was not on my radar at all. I'll buy everyone they've got. That's why they keep making them. Uh, it's no, I, mean, I think Izzy Izzy's going to sell out. I think, unlike other female rangers, I think they're going to, you know, pack two of those in each crate in each box instead of one when they're shipping to retailers. Uh, they usually ship pack two of you know two of the boy figures, but Izzy is just super popular and for good reason because she's awesome. Yeah, no, for sure, she's clearly uh, the intended fan favorite for this season. Um, you know, she's kind of the one that's most connected with uh, the modern day, um, you know, uh, the equivalent of saying that's so 90s uh, that Kim was doing back in the Mighty Morphin era. I think Coda's also going to sell pretty well, too. Um, yeah. He was very well liked in a very well liked season. Yeah. And all the face sculpts look really good. I think they gave Izzy a bit of a five head, really but other impressed. than that, yeah, yeah, um, and also they promise that they're going to finish SPD, Lost Galaxy, and Dino Thunder with uh, releases to come in 2023, um, and also they're going to start releasing lightning figures for Alien Rangers. Yeah, and you know that's exciting. Yeah. I mean, Corpus if they nailed, I know. Well, well, look. I mean, I guess if they nailed Doggy Kruger's sculpt the way they did, I see no reason why they wouldn't nail the Equitions. Yeah, I mean that won't be the issue. The Equitions is you only need one, and then they all look alike. That's racist. <laughs> well, they can take they it up with me when they do it. But yes. <laughs> so and finally they uh announced um fighters for morph chun li and ryu if that is something you're into i really do not like these designs but um no, I think maybe okay. because i never a, liked the ryu one it looked more like a boxer i'm not a street fighter fan i can't yeah, be friends and... anymore Tyler. And they don't look great either is the other issue like they um you know the the designs aren't really painted um it just i don't know it looks not cheap but just un like i, I don't know who was asking for these yeah w whatever i mean if they sell you know good for hasbro and if if you're happy if you, for these figures i'm happy for you but uh in the last year or so hasbro has moved to plastic free packaging and what that means for the Power Rangers Lightning line is no more Tom Whalen art, which is a real shame because I really dug his style. Absolutely. I mean, he had an incredible look to it. And really, I think that helps sell the fr the uh, Lightning collection. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I see that there's no room. I get it. Yeah, there's just no room for it. Uh, yeah, they, they used to have it on the side and on the window. But yeah, there's just not not the room because they they still want to be able to show what the figure looks like. So I like I get it, but I that doesn't mean I have to like it. I guess now we have Instagram for art. Yeah, yeah. My guess is it's also trying to be a little bit more environmentally friendly, which I you know I'm not going That's... to criticize any um, company for trying to do something extra for the environment. Um, yeah. Just yeah. Yeah, I guess you know, cutting out plastic. I, you know, I guess paper is recyclable. Uh, but tell that to the boxes that I've had, you know, collecting dust on, on my shelf. Uh, well, at least they'll be expensive when you sell them one day, Tyler. Well, you know, I actually did uh, put some of uh, my excess toys on eBay over the last uh, couple weeks. I'm taking a bath on nearly all of them. So oh. I'm not sure if that's true. Yeesh. I mean, if the, you've got the, any of the lightning report. Report. I, I've been selling like some lightning collection stuff, some old Bandai stuff, um, a dragon helmet I have no room for. That one I really took a loss on. 
Um, but because Draken is a horrible character, and everybody should know that. Oh come on! I was gonna say if you would have sent it my way, I would have because um, I I just got the money now for being able to start getting back into my collection because I haven't been able to get anything for a little bit. So if you've got anything left, um, go ahead and and you know send me the listings. Oh, now you tell me. You didn't ask. You didn't say. You should always be first in line for the sales, Tyler. You know this. <laughs> so uh, what uh, What are you guys looking forward to about Cosmic Fury based on what we know now? Like what sort of possibilities does it open up sending these dinos to space? Space Titanus. Space Titanus, huh? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, we're one theme away from space uh, dinosaur ninjas in space, which is pretty much the culmination of all Power Rangers right there. Well, you know, there are a lot of planets in the Power Rangers universe, you know, everywhere from Eltar to Aquatar to Triforia, and uh, you wonder, you know, what parts of those planets look like downtown Auckland. I doubt we're doing a world tour. But I'm really looking forward to just learning more about this season and more time with this fantastic cast. You know, again, um, you know, go watch the rest of Dino Fury. It is incredible, and I really cannot wait to talk about it. Um, so before we go, where can everybody find y'all? Plug your stuff. So I don't really have any social media, but Power Rangers the audio drama is still going strong. Uh, definitely give that a check out. And uh, I have a Twitter at Primo Piccolo, and nobody visits it, so that would that would be very nice. Okay, yeah, be sure to give them a follow, everyone. All right, so next time we are going to talk about uh, the at least the first few episodes of the backstretch of Dino Fury. And uh, till next time, everyone. See ya. Adios. For more, visit RangerCast.net. Reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, or through our website's voicemail feature. RangerCast is distributed under Creative Commons license. Share it. Don't sell it. Our opening theme is by Daniel Park. The ending theme is by Tyler Waldman. Bandai. Action. Satisfaction. <laughs>